if you've ever wanted to create a test online, uh, preferably a low stakes test, but if you wanted to create any type of test online, um, you'll notice that there are a lot of different options out there, but there is one in particular that is quite intriguing because it doesn't require any registration, it's completely free. Um, there is a paid for option for it, but the limitations uh, on the free site are actually pretty minimal. So I'm looking at testmoz.com. This is a great site. Um, and so in here, what you can do is you can create a test without any registration. All you do is come to the website and click on build a test. Now, what are some of the limitations? I talked about the paid for account. The limitations are this. You can only do up to 50 questions per quiz and you can only get 100 respondents for that quiz before you can't view any more of the respondents. It'll still accept respondents, in other words, people can still complete the test, but you won't see it until you delete some of the ones, uh, the older ones, and then you'll be able to see those. So, not really that big of a limitation. There are some other limitations in regards to some of the features, but in general, it's very robust, a lot of functionality to it, and I think you'll quite like it. So you just go to testmoz.com and you click on build a test. And then what you do is you give it a name and you give it a password. And you retype your password and you hit create test. Once you've done that, you'll come up with this message and it says bookmark this page and write down your password. Because you haven't signed up for this, it's not going to email this to you or anything like that. So what you need to do is copy the URL at the top and you need to copy down the password for the admin part so that you can go back and check results and you can make changes to it, you can copy it, there's lots of different things you can do. So that's the first thing you need to do. Once you've done that, then you can start getting into the settings and doing questions and publishing it. So let's just take a look at an example here. Um, this is one I just kind of quick, quickly put together as a sample. Um, this is the dashboard. I'm going to click on settings. And in the basic settings, you have things like you can change the name. Even if you've given it a name before, you can change the name now. And you can put an introduction to the quiz. The introduction will appear at the top of the quiz, uh, so you have a chance to be able to explain what's happening with that test. You can change your color scheme um, to blue, gray, red, whatever. And you can also choose the language for the TestMoz student interface. So when students visit it, um, what language will they see for the uh, things like start test, the points, correct, incorrect, those type of things which come from TestMoz. Um, those can be detected automatically according to their system. Um, you can also change it to something like English or whatever if you want to, but because those are important little pieces for them to understand, I would suggest leaving that as automatic. Question settings. So you can have it show the entire test all at once, uh, or you can have it change to one question per page. And you can change whether or not you want the students to be able to skip around to different questions, and you want to know how they're going to be seeing the answers after each question is answered. Do they show it correct, incorrect, or not? I don't show anything, move on to the next question. And you can also randomize the order. So you can do that for both uh, the whole test or individual. You can randomize it so that if you have two students who are side by side, they're not sharing answers. Uh, you can also put in a conclusion text. So when students are done, this is what they would see. And you can also change what they're going to see in regards to their score. Now for access, you can have it to anyone can come in or you can change it to a password, passcode, or you can change it to a list of things, either a unique ID or an email address. And so this, these lists you would set up, and then whoever comes, uh, they would have to put in their unique identifier, and then they would be able to complete the test. And over here, you can tell whether or not you would want to receive more than one response from that student or not, and if you want to have unlimited or just one time, two times, or whatever, how many times. Also, the length of time for the test. You would want to make sure that if you do put in your email address or unique ID, that you mention that to them. Don't enter your name, enter your student ID, or enter your email address or whatever. Now, these browser functionality things, um, these are supposed to protect from it being uh, somebody copying, pasting, uh, translating stuff, doing that type of thing. But really, most browsers, it would, you would have to make sure that each browser that they're using is the same and it also can break some things in regards to accessibility. So I would suggest not using that. You can read more about that under the technical disclosure here. Notifications. So after everybody completes, do you want to get an email from uh, saying that somebody completed it or not? Then once you've done that, you just hit save. 
and then you go back over to the questions and you can start editing questions. So I have three questions in here and you'll notice they have points in it. I have the answers, which is a correct answer. You can just choose insert, choose the type of question you want. You have graded ones, ungraded like a survey, or you can also put in um, other things in here like a text block or something like that. So these are them and you just choose which is the correct answer on this and you can change how you want it to see and you can also show an explanation or whatever you want to do with that and you can change the number of points that are available for that. Now what I, what I use this for is I use this for uh, self-assessment, so practice kind of thing. So I'll take some questions that come from the textbook or something like that and I'll put them in here um, and just for them to be able to try it out and to self-mark. And so I'm not doing this for high stakes and so I often will just leave it at one point each. After you're done, you just hit publish and after you publish then it will give you a link and that link then will be able to allow people to be able to take the test. They would have to type in their name or ID or whatever you ask them to do. And then once they've done that, they can then do the test. And once they've done the test, they hit submit and it tells them their score because I told them they can see the score plus each question they outline with each point done. You can change that again so it doesn't. But you'll notice there's the, uh, the conclusion text was there and they can then log out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in and we're going to take a look at those results. So here are the results from the three times I've taken this test. You can see I've done 100% on all of those and how respondents, the average times and I can actually download that as a CSV and upload it into Excel so I can sort it a little bit more. So that's test mod. So how would I use this? I've used it for two different main things. One is practice activities, like I mentioned, so self-marking practice activities, especially with an online class. This is really great for that because I'll do things where I do a kind of a flipped classroom thing where I have a video for them to watch. Then I have these practice activities that they can do with self-marking. And then they come into the class, the live class, and we then just work on the active practice inside the class. So that allows me to just focus the time that we have live online as opposed to me lecturing and presenting and practicing. I can do all of that before they come into the class. This just gives them a chance to be able to practice and they can do this as many times as they want. I've set it for unlimited. Flip side to that is I actually have students create their own quizzes based on what they've been learning. So in that way they can present to me that they understand the material by creating questions and answers that they then share with their fellow classmates. Those fellow classmates take the little test and it just gives me a lot of information about how they're comprehending the material and whether or not they're able to um, formulate that into questions. So really, they've enjoyed that a lot and, and it's really simple for them to do because I just send them the test mods, do it, I give them the step-by-steps on how to copy the URL and all that stuff so they can check the results. And they have fun checking to see how the, the other students have done on the quizzes. Um, I ask them for each for their passwords for the admin part so that I can then go in and check and see um, what the questions are and how other students are doing as well, um, but they love it. They think it's a great way of kind of flipping things around so it's not just always me providing the questions. They're creating questions as well too. So hopefully it gives you an overview for test mods. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, you can add your comments and questions into the comment section below. Uh, if you're happy with this video and you want to get more like this, then just please subscribe to this YouTube channel and hope to hear from you soon.